this video I'm going to be showing you how to fully optimize, get the game working and also how to cheat with Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for the PC. I will be putting every single step that I do down in the description as well as a pinned comment with timestamps so you guys can easily find which part of this guide you need quickly. To start off this video I want to talk about how to get this game to work with Windows 7 up to Windows 10 as the game does not normally work properly on these versions of Windows. So if you have the game via a disc and you install it normally and then try to play it once it's fully installed it will not launch. The reason for this is because of a DRM digital rights management in case you didn't know what that meant called safe disk. Safe disk is no longer supported via Windows 7 up to Windows 10 and as a result of this Windows doesn't know what it's running so it won't launch it. The only way around this is if you get a no CD crack or no CD patch. I'm going to refer to it as no CD crack from now on. Once you have your game installed, and in my case it's on my main hard drive which is D and then under EA games, this is what your game should look like normally. What you will need to find is the system folder and in the systems folder there is a .exe file called game. This is where the main game runs from, the game.exe. So what you would need to do, and unfortunately I cannot provide this for you for legal reasons, but you can easily find this on the web and that is a no CD crack. So you will need to search up for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets PC no CD crack and then when you get that you should get a game.exe from the web there all you need to do is get that game.exe from the web that you got drag and drop it into this folder here in your systems folder where the game's installed it will pop up a message saying do you want to replace the file in this area click yes and then what this will do is it will now allow you to play this game on windows 7 up to windows 10 without any issues whatsoever obviously for legal reasons i can't provide it however this is the only way to get this game to work via windows Windows 7 up to Windows 10 anymore so you have no choice but to do this so as far as I'm concerned it's a fairly reasonable thing for everyone to be able to do. Moving on to the second part of this video we're now going to move on to resolution. This game doesn't support that many resolutions however we're going to increase it so it can go all the way up to even 4k resolution size. The first thing you're going to need to do is launch your game. So find your game.exe within your systems folder where you've got your game installed. Double click it so it opens the game like normal. Wait for all this to go past and then that's fine. As long as you've opened it like this, that's all you need to do. You can then quit this. The reason we need to do that is because we need some files to be created. And if you've never played this game before, those files would not have been made yet. In order to find the files that we need, open up a file explorer, go into your documents folder and then within your documents folder you need to find a folder called Harry Potter 2. Open this up. These are the files that have just been created from us basically opening the launcher. These files are very important. These are the files that we basically need to edit everything in order to fix this game from now on. To start off with we're going to go into the game.ini file which is just here. Double click it in order to open it. Now I have made the text and in that inside this notepad big so you guys can see it more clearly. What we need to do is we need to scroll down all the way down until we find this title right here, windrive.windowsclient. You will notice the first two headings here are window viewport X, window viewport Y. We're looking for full screen viewport, which is right here. You're gonna wanna put in the resolution that you desire. In my case, it's 4K. So I'm gonna be putting in the numbers 3840, by 2160. This is 4K resolution. In the case for some people, it will be 1920 times 1080. Also, for people that like to play games in window mode for whatever reason, you would also put the same numbers for your resolution up here as well. So, in my case, it would be 3840 up top and then 2160 down bottom. Obviously I'm not playing it in a window mode so I'm keeping it in the full screen port. The other thing we're going to want to change here as well for modern day PCs because if we don't the game has severe texture issues is the full screen colour bits. In order to change this all we need to do is change this number from 16 to 32 and this is what the game supports up to 32 and then you've got everything you need here for the full screen resolution. We're going to now do a file and save 
Alternatively, on the keyboard, you can press Control S. Once you've done that, you can close this file for now. Now, the thing that we can't change just yet is our field of view. The reason we can't change this yet is because we haven't launched the game yet. We will launch it in a second. There is one other thing that you're going to need in order to make this work first. Head down to the description of the video and go to the following link that I've put in the description for you, which is to this website here. This is what it will open up to, which is GitHub. You will notice that there is a file down here, like so, called Legacy D3D Resolution Hack. What this does is it basically allows certain old games that don't support higher resolutions to basically unlock them so that they do support higher resolutions. Click on the file and then download it. I've already got it downloaded so I'm not going to download it. Once you've got that downloaded, open your file explorer and find where you've got that. In my case it's in downloads and then I put it in a folder called HP2 widescreen in order to find it easily. The other thing that you will need at this point is a RARing archive. I use WinRAR, some people use 7-zip. They're very easy to find and they are free. I will put a link down in the description to WinRAR in case anybody needs to download that. Once you've got WinRAR installed as well, this is what you will get from your download right here. Right click the file like so and then click extract here if you're using WinRAR. I'm not sure what it is if you're using 7-zip and that. It will extract the two files from the that folder right here. We're now going to open up another file explorer. I'm going to do that right now like so. And then we need to go to where we've got the game installed. In my case it's the main hard drive D for me and then EA games like so and then go into your systems folder. Once you're in here all you need to do is highlight these two files from earlier that you've extracted and drag and drop them into here like so. In your case it will not pop up with a message saying replace the files in the destination because those files don't exist yet in your destination. In my case it will because I've already got them installed here so I'm not going to do this and then that's all you need to do and once they're in there you're all good to go. The one thing you will also need to do while you're here is go to your desktop, right click the desktop and go to display settings. You will then need to change your scale and layout top setting from what your recommended is which is normally 150 down to 100. This will make everything look really small right now of course and as you can see it's really made a difference for me. This is fine, it won't affect anything in the game, we need this in order to make the game work. Once you've done this go into your systems folder where you've got the game installed and run game.exe. When you run game.exe, the game will open up the launcher like so. Now that I've got the sound turned off, I'm going to quickly go to a load game and load this game that I've got here so we can jump into the game really quickly. Once you're in the game, you will notice that you are now at a very high resolution. And this is 4K resolution in my case right now. However, what you will also notice is that half of the screen is cut off. It's very stretched and looks a bit all over the place. What we're going to do is we're going to sort that. So now that we're out of the game, all we need to do is go and set the field of view now. We can do this by going to our documents folder in File Explorer and going down to Harry Potter 2's folder again and then going to the user.ini file this time. Scroll down this file until we get to a heading called Engine Player Porn. This is the only second heading inside of this folder. Scroll all the way down until you find the field of view also known as desired field of view. There are two of them right here. Field of view can be different for certain people. It depends if your screen supports 16 by 9 or 16 by 10. The default for this game is obviously 90, which is no good here at higher resolutions. In my case, I'm going to be going for the 16 by 9, and that for me is 100.39. So I'm going to get rid of the 90 here and put in 100.39. And then I'm going to do the same thing again down here, and put 100.39. And that is the field of view that I need here in order to make the game's field of view normal for me. This is usually fine for everyone. If this doesn't work for you, you can try out this number that I'll quickly type out for you that might need it, 106.27. For some reason, for some people, this seems to work and this doesn't. So if 100.39 doesn't work for you, try out 106.27. Once you've done this, all you need to do is do a file, save, or a control S, and then you can close out of this. And as you can see now, loading back into the game, everything is much better. You can see that the screen is no longer stretched. 
the actual bottom of Harry is basically visible and it looks perfect it looks absolutely fine the only thing that you will notice with 4k resolution at any point is that some of the menu at the bottom is a bit hard to find you also will notice that in the case of certain things like this you might find it difficult in order to see certain things so the other thing you will notice in here too is under resolution it will actually show the resolution that you are now using which in my case is the 4k resolution there the other thing that I will show you in a minute now is the fact that some of the controls are not able to be changed within the game anymore because of the menu being cut off at the bottom. This is not a problem because we can change this in the .ini file. So I'm going to show you where that is now. Once you're out of the game, go to your documents, find your HP2 folder, and then this time you need to go to the user.ini file. Open it up like so, and what you will notice is in the top section here, are every single key on the keyboard. Every single key that you need in order to change whatever you want to change within the game. So if there was something you couldn't access on the menu there, uh, you can add it into here. And all you need to do for that is, for example here with W, if you for whatever reason didn't like W as move forward, you could move that by doing Control X on the keyboard and then placing it somewhere else, like in the O option as an example here, and doing Control V. This now means that your O button will now be moved forward rather than the W key. Obviously I'm not going to do that because that's insane, but uh, yes, <laughs> that is what you can do. And again, you can do this with every option within the game, depending what you need to change and move around. It's not a problem. Once you have changed it, of course, do Control S or File Save. In my case, I'm not going to save this. But yes, that is how you can change your control. The next thing I want to show you is a problem that is very common throughout this game. And that is where some textures are not properly loaded into the game. In this case, there is a prime example at the very beginning of the game where Harry's glasses are basically rectangles rather than actual glasses that allow you to see his eyeballs and things. Same at the beginning with trees having big massive rectangular green squares around them rather than the actual tree itself. I will show you an example of what this is by running the game right now and then doing a new game. So here we are at a new game and as you can see already the trees have got massive giant green rectangles on them which is not normal and of course Harry here has got big massive black square or rectangles around his glasses so we can't even see his eyes and it's an absolute mess. This is also common throughout other parts of the game as well. Let's fix this. What we need to do in order to fix this is go to our documents folder, go to the Harry Potter 2 folder and go to game.ini. When inside of here, scroll all the way down until you find this section right here. D3D drive dot, you get the rest. But anyway, you need to come down to this section. What I will do is I will copy and paste these section names down in the description in the pinned comment for everyone. So all you need to do is basically just copy what you've got in the description of my video. So then when you're in these files, you can do a control F and just copy this heading into your search box so you can find it really quickly. But once you're down in this section here, scroll down until you find this option here called use pre-cache. It currently is set to true. We need to delete true and change this to false. Like so. Once you've done this, do a file save or a control S. You can now close this. If we now boot up the game, you'll notice straight away on the new game that the trees themselves no longer have these really weird green rectangles around them. And you will also notice that Harry has now got actual glasses rather than weird black boxes around these glasses. So he actually looks normal now. And this will fix every other texture problem that exists in the game as well. So now everything should be perfectly normal. The next thing we want to fix is frame rate. Obviously frame rate is key in games in today's society. This game is no different. It has a default frame rate of 30 frames per second, which is not great for anyone really, let's be honest. You can change it to much higher frame rates now. Just go to documents, go to your Harry Potter 2 folder and open the game.ini file. Once inside here, scroll down all the way until you find the section where you changed your resolution earlier which is the windrive.windowsclient bit and then scroll down until you find the option called minimum desired frame rate 
it will currently be set to 30 because that is the default for the game. However, we can change this to be higher frame rates. Let's change this, is delete the 30, and in my case, I'm gonna put 60, but in some people's cases, it could be 120 or whatever. Whatever number is suitable for you frame rate wise, for most people it's 60, put that number in there, then do a file save or a control S, and then you will have that saved. This will now fix the frame rate of the game so that it runs much better and a lot smoother. The next helpful addition is changing the wait time on the splash screens when opening the launcher. We can change this as normally when you run the game, you can see that this splash screen here takes forever in order to get out of the way. We shall set this so that it doesn't take much time whatsoever because nobody wants to wait forever just for the game to open, right? So all we have to do is go to our documents, go to our Harry Potter 2 folder, go to the game.ini folder, and then you'll notice right up the top here under a title front end are two sections, EA splash wait time and Warner Brothers splash wait time. They're currently sent to three seconds, so if you still want to see them, you can set the number to one. In my case, I just want to get them out of the way, so I will set them to zero. Setting them to zero means that they basically will spend zero seconds whatsoever popping up on the screen, pretty much. Once you set that like so, do your file, do your save, and then you can close out of this. Go back to where you got the game installed, run it, and then when you run it, you will notice that those splash screens now, if you have it set to zero, will literally not even appear pretty much. Well, one will appear, but it will be so quickly out of the way that you won't even notice it. So there you go, it is now out of the way. And as soon as you do a low game or a new game, it's gone anyway. But notice how much faster this launcher just opened. Really helpful addition here, and I highly recommend that you do this. And then finally, the last addition I have to this video today is debug mode, which of course is the developer mode that developers use in order to do certain commands and things while making the game. If you want to start mucking around with the game and so on with debug mode, then you can do it like so. Go to your documents folder, go to your Harry Potter 2 folder, open game.ini. When in here, scroll all the way down to the very bottom and you will find a title called hgame.baseconsole and underneath it you will notice be debug mode and it's currently set to false. Delete false and change it to true. When you do that like so, you can do a file save or a control S. Once you've done that, close this. You'll notice that while you're in the game now, in the top left hand corner of the screen will be some green text. This is debug mode text, or developer text, whatever you want to call it. You can now do whatever you want in the game basically. If you press the apostrophe key on your keyboard, it will bring up this text box here. You can use this text box to put in different cheat commands and so on. I'll leave a link to a website that has loads of different codes if you want to use them for yourself for a bit of fun. The other thing that you can do here as well, is if you press delete on the keyboard, this will freeze Harry in place but keep everything else that's not a person in the game moving. So as you can see, the fire and things will carry on moving too. But more importantly, this will allow you to now freely move the camera any way you want. You can do this by using the arrow keys on your keyboard and the mouse in order to look around. So as you can see, I can now move any way I want. So I could look at Harry's face at the front here, for example, like so. Alternatively, I can go outside the boundaries, like so. And I can go anywhere I want within the game. And as you can see, you can even find secret little spots that you don't normally get to go in, like secret rooms, for example, here, with the fat lady. And of course, if you don't already know, I do have a video about this, but there is a secret challenge room back here that if you just drop yourself into, then you can, you know, do whatever you want inside that challenge. And in order to do that and get out of this mode at any point, just press the delete key on your keyboard again and it will drop Harry back into place for play again. As I will show as another example, right there. And there you go. Everything is back to normal like so. And you can fly around and do whatever you please. That's all there really is to this video. I appreciate all the support on the previous video that I did for this game, by the way, but this is a vastly superior video to that by 
every sense. I hope this helped every single person out there who wants to get this game to be literally perfect on newer versions of Windows. And for all the people out there that really have been dying to play this game in 4K. And I must say, it's been incredible how many people have asked me how to get this game to work in 4K. Now you have your answer finally. I hope that this has helped you guys out in particular. Now, not only just myself, but other people out there too can start putting this game up on their channels in 4K. And that is always great in my opinion. I will definitely do a similar set of videos for Lost for Stone and also for The Prisoner of Azkaban in time when I have got all that stuff sorted out and ready to go. And if you guys haven't seen my playthrough of this game yet in the 4K resolution, then I will leave a link to that at the end of the video here on the end splash screen as well as in the description and the pinned comment. I hope you guys enjoy the game and enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.